Welcome back to the channel. I'm CB Harris, and I'm here at the Armory at Able Tactical in Guernsey, Wyoming, with Shane Clevenger, and uh, we have a 1911 here again. We have a 1911 again. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is a little bit of trigger control. What I normally teach when I am teaching trigger control is when I give a class, the first thing I ask is, what's that for? It's the trigger, right? What's it do? It makes the gun go off. That it does. Okay. What I like to refer to that is your steering wheel, and not to be confused with driving the gun as much as steering the gun. Another argument you have is grip, which I think we're going to talk about later in, in another video. But getting that grip, which should be able to obtain that grip uh, when you draw from whatever type of carry you do, whether it be on a holster or a bag or whatever. So that, that grip, or some people call it master grip, and that grip alignment to allow your uh, trigger finger to get on that trigger. And that's another whole argument. Because everybody's like, well, put it over here. Put it on the very end. First, third, first joint. You know what? I really don't care where you put it as long as you can obtain and maintain sight alignment while you're pressing that trigger. Right. Okay? And the reason I say that's kind of your steering wheel is if you have a revolver or a double action or a New York trigger and a Glock where it's 8, 10, 12 pounds, you have to move that 8 or 10, 12 pounds uh, while maintaining sight alignment and using that trigger weight as your friend to align that sight. If you try to do it the way some firearms instructors tell you, get the sights in line, then press the trigger, you're kind of behind the, the eight ball there. And uh, another way to kind of look at it is, have you ever driven a vehicle without power steering? I have, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, is it easier to steer it when it's static sitting still or when it's moving? No, uh, it's definitely easier. Once you get it moving, you can actually yeah. turn the wheel. Otherwise, it uh, uh, doesn't work very good. All Armstrong from there, so yeah. if you're sitting static. So you want to keep that, get that trigger moving. Uh, I'm not saying that you automatically start pressing the trigger from here and you're not even on the sights. That's not what I mean, of course. But uh, once you're going to present the firearm, whether you be firing from a close contact position down here or the third eye position, or whatever, what you want to try to do is, if you're presenting the firearm and you're going to fire, is that as you're pressing out, you're picking up that sight and you're starting your, your sight alignment already, and you should know by the grip of the gun how it feels in your hand. So when you press out, press out, press out, when I get the, my extension, that shot should be going off, because it only really matters that the sights are aligned when the hammer falls and hits the primer, you know, the firing pin, primer, firing sequence. Uh, to add to that, by using that trigger weight to align your sights, once you fire this semi-automatic, it's going to cycle. So it's going to cycle. I usually have people hold the trigger back when they're just starting out, so they come back on target. A lot of instructors do that, which is fine, and I agree with. So then they're going to ease it out to the feel it reset and hear it reset. Again, applying that steering, obtaining sight alignment, maintaining through the shot. What your end result should be is when it's cycling and, reco and recovery and reco recoil and recovery is that I'm resetting that here and as I'm coming back on target I'm starting to press 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 again so that when it comes back to where it left from on target it's going off again for that true double tap instead of pow pow once you start to uh, utilize that drill and you're starting to get that down you'll find out that you can shoot faster 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 and still be on target given you know the distance and whether the target's moving or static of course uh, obviously if you're starting off on a static target and you're practicing for or training for you know an encounter on the street where you may have to save your life then you know obviously the, all those things that come together are going to help you under stress so uh, trigger control that's trigger control one-on-one all right so if you guys have any questions about trigger control be sure to leave it down in the comment section below and be sure to come back next thursday for another tip or hint, and until next time, take care and be safe.